Every four years, countries from around the world gather to compete on sports' greatest stage. To most, Olympic glory can only be imagined. But for those who take part, it has been said, the important thing in life is not the triumph, but the struggle. The essential thing is not to have won, but to have fought well. The Olympic Games began in 776 BC, but were discontinued until 1896 when they were reborn under the vision and drive of Frenchman Baron Pierre de Coubertin. He believed that the Olympics were more about taking part than winning. Not the triumph, but the struggle. Derek Redman was medal contender in the 400 meters in 1992. When his hamstring snapped, his race was over. Courageously, he picked himself up and hopped around the track. His father joined him and together, they crossed the finish line. Jane Seville was leading the 20 kilometers race walk when with gold medal in sight, she was disqualified for an illegal technique her dreams of Olympic glory instantly vanished. At the 1968 Olympics, marathon runner John Stephen Akwari from Tanzania was injured in a fall early in the race. He ran on and limped across the finish line an hour after the winner saying, my country did not send me 7,000 miles to start the race. Eric Musambani of Equatorial Guinea learned to swim only a year before the 2000 Olympics. When the other two swimmers in the heat were disqualified for false starts, Eric swam alone to the roars of the crowd and finished. Over the years, the Olympics have signified the highest in human achievement and have brought honor to all participating nations. In the ancient Olympics, Greeks competed as an act of worship to Zeus. In this program, we will look at modern day Olympians who also see their participation in sport as an act of worship. Athletics has long been considered one of the most celebrated sports in the Olympic Games. Athletics has always illustrated the Olympic motto of faster, higher, stronger. Catherine Dereba of Kenya and Allison Felix of the United States, both world-class runners, have had the opportunity to represent their countries as Olympic athletes. They each won a silver medal in the 2004 Olympics in Athens. Allison took 22.18 seconds to win her medal, Catherine over two hours. Catherine Dereba is a native of Kenya a country which consists of many diverse cultures, both old and new. Famed for its spectacular wildlife, this African nation is known for its beautiful game reserves and favorable climate, perfect for sport and recreation throughout the year. I started learning when I was in fifth grade. Not until when I finished my high school, that I, I got a coach and found that I have a lot of potential. Catherine began running marathons in 1999 and has since set a world record as well as winning the Boston Marathon four times. The Olympic championships are the 
most important because uh, they only come after every four years. It's not like the World Championship. And once you win a medal in the Olympics, it seems like uh, people keep on remembering. It's not like any other championships. When I got to the Olympics, for sure, I, I, I wasn't like 100%. Once we started the race, I just took it very easy, hoping that my body will keep on catching up and loosening up. So once I started seeing people breaking from 25th kilometer, I got kind of scared, but I said, well, I'm sure that God is with me and he's gonna carry me. When my, my legs could not carry me, he's able to carry me. When I ran, I normally feel great and remember how God has blessed me so much. He gives me the talent of which he doesn't charge me anything, you know. It's just a free will gift, you know. And uh, I can just use it the way I want, just for his glory. At the same time Catherine was making her Olympic debut, young American Allison Felix was gaining a reputation as a sprinter. My brother ran track in um, high school and I've always kind of followed after my brother and just wanted to be just like him. So he really got me into track and field and I kind of only came out because he did. And after that, I fell in love with it and was really passionate about it. Her youth is a great asset and, and being able to turn professional at, at the age of 18 uh, is pretty impressive. But um, I think she didn't take herself too seriously. Um, she embraces competition, but it doesn't define her. No, I thrive off competition. I love competing against um, the best women in the world. Just knowing that that's what I wanted to do really kept me motivated. Allison Felix now has the baton for the USA Red Team. I had a great experience in Athens. It was amazing. Um, I'll never forget it. I just remember going into the opening ceremonies and um, just remembering how many people were there and just all the different countries. And I think I've learned just so much from it and um, I'll never forget it. It went pretty much like any other race. My start wasn't that great. Um, getting out and I think that's where I really lost a lot of time and I came on pretty strong but it wasn't quite enough to make up the difference. I think as soon as I finished um, the race I wasn't sure um, how to take getting the silver. I think it, when you go into any race you go into it wanting to win so it's definitely a little bit of a letdown but then my family quickly put me into perspective and um, I realized what I had accomplished, so it was definitely um, a success. Allison was just 18 years old when she won her silver medal in Athens. Catherine had to wait until she was 32 to make it to the Olympics. My biggest disappointment in my running career is uh, when I didn't make uh, the team for the Olympic year 2000. I did cope with that disappointment. It was so painful, but all I said is that uh, if this is not God's will for me to be there, well, I'll just wait and ask God to give me the grace and the patience to just wait upon him. Because when it comes and it is his time, I'm sure everything will work so well. The disappointment that I face is pretty much injuries and um, my faith really plays a part in that because I know I, I'm able to look at the bigger picture and I'm able to see that you know God has a plan for my life and that this is also a part of it. I can't imagine my life without knowing Jesus. You know, I can't imagine waking up and just going through life without him. So, you know, he is my life and that's what I live for. Badminton was introduced into the Olympics in 1992 and has since been dominated by players from Asia. Hendrawan and Shanjo Wajaya 
are two players who have participated in many international championships. As badminton continues to grow in popularity, one of the greatest challenges among his players is the pressure to always be a champion. I think badminton is quite important because in Indonesia it is a sport which is considered to be a source of pride for the country. To come second or to only enter the semi-finals is considered failure. You have to be a champion. Badminton is the only sport in which Indonesia has ever won a gold medal at the Olympics. That is why badminton is prestigious and important for Indonesia. My greatest moment was when I became Olympic champion in Sydney. In the Olympics, you play for yourself, but also as a representative for your country at the highest level, as the Olympics is the biggest sporting event in the world. It was such an overwhelming experience. The hard times, the long wait, the pressures and the challenges, they all disappeared at the Olympics. The Olympics is the biggest event in sport because it showcases a country. Every Indonesian is hoping for gold medals. So I felt a big responsibility to deliver a gold medal for the country. I played very well in all my matches, from the first round to the final. I was just one step away from winning a gold medal, but I failed. I felt very disappointed. At that time, I was able to hand it over to Jesus Christ, and I believed that whatever happened would be the best for me. And as it turned out, God's plan was different than mine. I aimed for gold, but I got a silver medal. Like many of their fellow Olympians, Hendrawan and Chandra both feel the weight of their country as they compete to win under such great expectations. To be a champion means I have to be different than others. The commitment, demanded by being a champion is different from the experience of ordinary people. People are very critical when you lose because they always expect Indonesia to be the champions. After I lost in the Olympics, I thought my career was over and that I had no more purpose, but Jesus gave me so much more. In my career when I lose, people look down on me and blame me. But it is during those hard times that my faith in God grows. Being famous and respected is great. But what is more beautiful is walking with God, knowing that God loves me and being His. It is the most important thing for me. I just want to be remembered as a humble, nice, and ordinary person, not as a world champion or Olympic champion.
I want to be remembered as a person who does not turn away from God's commandments. I just want to follow God's way. Sri Lanka, home to more than 20 million people, is a small island in South Asia known for its tropical forests, beautiful beaches, and cultural heritage. The tsunami of December 26, 2004 struck a long coastal area stretching over 1,000 kilometers. In the wake of this disaster, Olympic swimmer Julian Bowling has used his status to make a difference to the people of this island. For me, I started swimming when I was uh, quite late compared to the others, my friends who were swimming, my peers. Um, it was about 12 or 13 when I wanted to get into the pool. It's funny, uh, when I joined my high school team, um, I was actually a nobody within my age group. And when two years later, I swam for the country. Julian represented Sri Lanka in four South Asian games, winning a total of 15 gold medals at these events. Thank you, Mark. In 1984, he had his first opportunity to be included on the Olympic team. The uh, 84 Olympics was my first, I would say, of the three Olympics I went to, but the nice thing was we never planned on it and it suddenly came. Yeah, it was a lot of pride involved because you're at the Olympics, there's only a few thousand athletes from around the world that gather, so you, you do feel special. But also, in a, in a, in a lighter note, it's like a, I was like a little fish in a big pond. I mean, we can talk about achievements in terms of success, but I think the nicest thing is the Olympic motto. It says that struggle is more important than the victory, and I sure did struggle through my uh, career. But today, as a swimming coach, I can see the reason why I went through what I went through so that I can relate to kids. If they do, uh, are in a similar situation, I can sort of empathize with them. How many of you are swimming the time trial tomorrow? If things go wrong, do you give up? You don't, there are ups and downs. The thing is, your mind has to be strong. So sometimes it's good to be next to the coach, talk to him. If you're too nervous, let's talk about something other than swimming. Julia now earns his living running the Rainbow Swim Academy in the capital city of Colombo. The club exists to help beginners learn to swim and train elite swimmers for competition. Outside of the swim academy, Julian gives back to the community through an organization called Swim Lanka, designed to help children overcome their fear of the sea following the trauma of the tsunami. The Swim Lanka project is all about mobile pools. So what we do is we take these mobile pools from village to village. For like five weeks, we go through 10 lessons for each kid and we go through about 100, 125 kids in a batch. And I think in total we had 30 pools uh, at one stage um, running around the coastline in the entire nation where the tsunami was affected. At the end of the series of classes, each young swimmer is awarded with a certificate recognizing their achievement. I'm grateful that I'm in this situation with Sri Lanka. This is important, not just because we want to produce superstars or kids who can swim for Sri Lanka and do well, but I love every child to learn to swim in water. Teaching to swim, I think, is a life-saving tool, and that's the reason why I'm uh, in this sport. In many African nations, sport is held in high esteem. This is certainly the case in the country of Rwanda. Every Rwandan is an athlete, because every day he walks and he runs. To compete at the Olympics is a wonderful achievement for any human. Yet few have faced the challenges that Dudani DC of Rwanda has had to overcome. When I was growing up, there was no television, but I followed the 1996 Olympics in Atlanta on the radio. I thought it was amazing that a Rwandan was able to finish eighth in the world in the 10,000 meters. 
It was only in the year 2000 that I realized that I was good at running. So I decided to try to exploit and maximize my talent. In 2004, I took part in the Olympic Games in Athens. I was not expecting to win a medal. Just getting to the Olympics was a big achievement in itself. Because of my lack of experience, 17 was the best I could achieve in the Olympic final. The following year, DC represented his country in the Francophone Games and took gold in the 10,000 meters and bronze in the 5,000. To understand the magnitude of DC's achievement, it is necessary to consider the events of 1994 when Rwanda was devastated by genocide. On my last day with my father, there were eight people in the house my mother, my brothers and sisters. My father said we were all going to die. He said that he wanted the whole family to pray and prepare to go to heaven. My family started to pray, but I went outside. When the others started to pray, I went out. I heard the rebels knock on the door. It opened. They said something to my family. I understood it was over. It was death. They said, come out. My family came out. They were killing my mother. They are killing my, 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 my mother. I, I, I was still alive. I was still alive. After the death of my family, I don't remember much. But in the end, everyone within 400 meters was dead. I have never forgotten that my father asked me to pray in preparation for heaven. I used to pray every day with my family, but when my family died, I stopped praying. For five years, I did not pray. A few years later, I was asking myself why my family who had prayed were all now dead. Where are they now? But I had confidence that my family and friends who perished were in heaven. I realized that if I was ever going to see my family again, I needed to start praying again. The only way to see my family again was through prayer. In the Bible, it says that there is only one way to heaven, Jesus Christ. If you are to get to heaven, it can only be through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the way to heaven and the way to God. The Olympians featured in this program represent the highest in personal achievement. It is the result of hard work and dedication. But along with their passion for sport, they also share another passion. I believe that my career and my fame will end someday. Just like an old river, my popularity will automatically dry up. Jesus thought that there are more important things in this life, that there is eternal life. That is what I was looking for, not success as a badminton player or popularity. Because I know Jesus Christ, I am certain that I have found eternal life. If Jesus died because of my sins, because he loves me so much, and he wouldn't like me to, to, to die or to have eternal destruction. 
So that's why he offered Jesus to die on the cross on my behalf so that I may live with him. To me, the gospel message is Jesus being our savior, dying on the cross for us, and you know that we don't have to be lost, that we can, um, that we can come to him and that he can save us and um, that we can follow him and have a purpose in life. But there's a thing called eternal life and we cannot achieve it on our own. We need God's help and God has given that answer through his son Jesus. He died for us so that we can have eternal life. To me, it's uh, simply not trying to do good, but just accept the good deed done by Jesus and accept into your life. And then from there on, it's home. We as athletes do struggle like anyone else. Even though we have Jesus in our lives, I think we are not perfect. We have our struggles. Sometimes we falter. But the key is what we encourage you is to look to Jesus and not to us because I think He is perfect. He will lead you. But also learn that you don't have to be perfect to have a relationship with God.